Welcome to this episode of Destination Dare. Every community in the Outer Banks has a story to tell, and this show brings that information to life. From Dare County history to current events, from government services to local profiles, we keep you entertained, informed, and up to date. You never know what someone is capable of until we give them the opportunity to show us what they can do. Who's number one? I want everybody to hold hands up. Who's number one? The county offers many opportunities for people with intellectual disabilities. One being Special Olympics with lots of sporting activities as well as several opportunities through the Virginia Tillett Community Center. Everyone there is treated and greeted like a family member. It's just something to behold. I'm very proud of it and proud to be a small part of the work that they do for our community. The work that Sandy Pace and her staff do there in terms of adding value to our community is simply amazing. Caroline Parks was born and raised here in Manio. She's been a part of Special Olympics probably since she was in elementary and middle school. She got selected to be a part of the USA Games for the bowling team. I have fun on Bash Lippet. I love my friend. I love her P and I hate Lou. She puts her heart and soul into it and does her best every time. For those of you that haven't seen these athletes, you don't really have a full understanding of their the thrill of competition in activities that they can not just participate but excel, it is a really fulfilling and rewarding experience. Watching them be who they want to be, do the things that they want to do, I feel very blessed to have the opportunity to be a part of that. They're capable of so much more than what we give them credit for. We always need more volunteers. We need more volunteers at the center for lots of different activities, and we also need volunteers with Special Olympics. You can apply by contacting me here at the center. Call 252-475-9270. You can reach out on our Facebook page through the Virginia S. Tillett Community Center. We don't run without volunteers. It's a wonderful way to give back to the community. It's more rewarding for us as volunteers than it is for the athletes. So welcome back to another episode of Getting to Know Nags Head. Today I am with town manager Andy Garman. Andy, what's going on? Hey, how are you, Benny? Good, and why are we at Public Works today? Uh, well, we wanted to talk a little bit about our budget for uh, FY23, and one of the big projects in our budget for the coming year is our Public Works complex. We're gonna do a, a pretty major project looking at providing new facilities for Public Works, which is about a third of our overall workforce. Public Works provides facilities for sanitation, fleet maintenance, water distribution, water operations, facilities maintenance, stormwater and drainage, as well as our bulk yard, which is right across the street. So this isn't the only project though you have this year, Mr. Manager, right? What else you got going on? Uh, there's a lot of different projects related to a lot of our infrastructure. Uh, we've got a bundle of street projects going on, some carried over from last year. We're gonna combine with the ones from this year. We're doing several neighborhoods like Nags Head Acres, Old Nags Head Cove, Soundside Road, and then several areas between the highways up on Memorial. Uh, one of the other things we were looking at, or actually that we did this year, was a capital investment fund, which is a, a new fund we're using to sort of um, leverage our existing resources uh, to, in order to pay for these uh, capital needs like rolling stock, equipment, and infrastructure. Uh, basically, it's taking some of our unassigned fund balance and putting it into a new fund and allowing us to leverage that to pay for years where we have higher needs and not finance as much. And so hopefully that will help the town in the long run, especially with interest rates going up like they are now. So 
Um, we think that's uh, pretty innovative and uh, we're, we're hoping that it benefits the taxpayers of the town. Uh, we're also looking at doing renovation to a portion of our skate park, uh, which has deteriorated and we're, we're trying to keep that open, but it really needs to be reconstructed. And so we're working with a designer on that. Uh, we're doing some small upgrades to our dog park uh, just to keep it cleaner. And so we might put in some uh, doggy turf and some other things there. And uh, we, we have been doing events for the last few years. Uh, Dowdy Park, we've been doing the farmer's market and some other things. Uh, we have an events uh, position now that's full time. And so we're hopeful to be able to do a lot of new, new and exciting things. So we got some information on the parks. Uh, anything going on on the beaches? Uh, we've been trying to budget money every year to replace some of our beach accesses. Uh, this year we're replacing the Hollowell and Conk Street beach accesses. Oh, cool. And then uh, last year, a project that we had budgeted that's going to be carried over and start in the fall is the Epstein Bathhouse. A few years back, we replaced Bonnet Street. We're going to replace the Epstein Bathhouse. We got grant funds for that. And then in a couple more years, we're going to look at replacing Hargrove, so we'll have all of our bathhouses done. Yeah, we mentioned uh, beach accesses and bathhouses. Actually, uh, we're doing some stormwater projects this year. One, one of them is pretty innovative. Uh, we're going to set up a drainage um, project to help the Wrightsville area around Nags Head Elementary School. Years ago during Hurricane Matthew, that area flooded. And so we're going to actually replace the, the Bonnet Street beach access parking lot and put drainage underneath the parking lot. Interesting. And uh, so there'll be some chambers underneath the paved area and um, we'll pump it to that area. So that'll be pretty interesting. So of course, no Nags Head video would be complete without talking about the famous Nags Head Septic Health Initiative. Is there anything going on with that this year? Yes, we uh, actually did an update to our decentralized wastewater management plan this year. And we found that we needed to increase some of our participation in the program. Uh, we have several incentives to, to get people to maintain their system. Uh, one of which is a credit towards your water bill to have your tank pumped. We increased that credit from $45 to $150 this year. Uh, we also offer low interest loans to property owners who need to replace their drain fields. And so we, we have that. Anyone can take advantage of that. And then we also do free inspections to tell you whether or not you need uh, your tank pumped or you need your drain field worked on. And so we, we offer that as well. So thanks for showing me around Public Works and talking to me a little bit about the budget this year. Yeah, thank you, Benny. Uh, we're happy to do it. Uh, this uh, video wouldn't be complete without thanking our great employees, uh, not only the, the, the employees that help put the budget together, but all the other uh, hardworking employees of the town. Uh, the employees, as the board always says, is our greatest asset. Also want to thank the board. They're highly supportive, highly engaged, and uh, they make this process easy. That's a wrap. Yep. Thank you, Benny. You got it. This past year, we've had a lot of projects going on in the town at our parks. And I'm standing at Aviation Park off Veterans Drive, where it's a combination of the Frog Pond Aviation Park, and Paws Park. At Paws Park last year, we added a dog wash station. We also redesigned the small dog park to add a thousand square feet and introduce some shade. And also the small dogs can now go around the park to the big dogs and meet them on the far side. We're also adding a, a new pavilion at Aviation Park for families to have birthday parties, just sit and read a book, we're also installing lights and then we're going to have music out here for events that we have. We have ice cream social, we have Christmas events, we do Christmas lights. We have a whole bunch of different things that we like to do here throughout the year for the citizens and visitors alike. All our events can be found on the town website. Also you'll notice that we've uh, increased visibility of the pond throughout the park. We've widened some of the bank areas so that we can have more room for the vendors at our farmer's market. We've recently resurfaced the path around the frog pond and we've updated the exercise stations and it's approximately five laps around the pond is a mile. At Heyman Park, we've added a brand new swing set and a brand new play set for the kids. At Meekins Field, we've added a brand new play set, a brand new swing set, 
We've added pickleball lines to our tennis court. We are revitalizing our turf field for multi-use play. We have a new bathroom building being constructed now, and we are going to start a splash pad for Meekins Field. We've also increased the parking. We've added another parking lot, and the ATM that everybody always loved is coming back. Along with the play set that we've added, we're adding picnic shelters and sunshades. On the town website, we have a conceptual plan of Meekins Field. It shows the splash pad, the new building that's being built, the sunshades, the play set, and all the other apparatus that is at Meekins Field. On Bay Drive at Moore Shore Sound Access, we've added a gazebo and a kayak launch with a small parking lot for about four cars. The town and its Board of Commissioners have always welcomed and solicited citizen feedback. The Board established the West Side Recreation Group to evaluate all of the town's recreational facilities. Made up of Kill Devil Hills residents, the West Side Recreational Group recommendations are being incorporated into the town's recreational plan and implemented. Bring your voice to your town. Consider applying to serve on one of the town's boards and committees. Your voice, your parks, your community. Hello, I'm Cole Yates, the town of Kitty Hawks Ocean Rescue Director. Our rescue staff works hard every summer to protect the residents and visitors while they enjoy our beaches. The one thing we like to ask is for you to be part of our team as well. Help us protect the beaches by doing your part. Here are some tips and guidelines to keep everyone safe. When you arrive to the beach, please don't block the lifeguard's line of sight to the water with your canopies, tents, and shelters. Don't dig any big holes that our vehicles or beachgoers can fall in. Know your exact geographic location at all times, especially if you are not swimming in front of a lifeguard. If you see someone who you think needs help, don't hesitate to call 911. Don't delay. You can be part of the chain of survival by activating 911 and getting all the first responders in motion. Every day there are hazards on our beaches. For example, west winds can blow out paddle boulders and large rafts, even when the ocean is flat. There are also some self-help mantras to go by, such as, with lightning, hear it, fear it, see it, flee it. Another is, protect your neck by entering the ocean feet first and watch for breaking waves. Always keep your eyes on the shore break. Always ask lifeguards about the daily threats, like if there are rip currents or bad weather. Don't float where you can't swim. When you leave the beach, we ask that you take all your toys, shelter, and trash. Only leave your footprints. Be beach smart by matching your abilities to the ocean hazards. And Kitty Hawk Ocean Rescue thanks you for your help. So earlier this year, I came to the Chief, did some research looking to pitch the idea for a canine unit for Southern Shores. The town of Southern Shores has never had a canine program. So Chief and I had sat and met, he was all for it. We both discussed the asset that it would have for this town, for the community, such a big tool for community policing. Everybody loves dogs, interacts with dogs. So we knew that with that, with the other things that it was capable of doing, that it would be a great idea. I explained to him that, that I would be able to justify it and try to help out if we could find the funding for it. Then he found this scholarship that he had asked if he could apply for, and of course I said absolutely. And a week later, we were granted a full scholarship for a canine with all the training and uh, room and board for um, the officer, for the handler, and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> so for training, I went to American Canine Interdiction, or AKNI. I was there for nine weeks. So within the first week, you end up going to the kennel and they pull out 30, 40 dogs, just depending on how many people there are. And then you just interact, see which dog works for you. You know, some are high drive, some didn't have as much drive, just to find what fit for you. You would watch it work and then you're like, okay, that's, that's the dog I'd like to, to like to run. They said Echo is a very high driven dog, but he'd be a great dog. So 
Echo and I, you know, I picked him. I said, okay, well, let's, let's see how it works. And he's been a great fit. He's a two and a half year old Belgian Malinois German Shepherd mix. We really didn't want a bite dog, but what we did want is we wanted a dog that was a narcotics dog. Also wanted an article search, and it also has the capability, which was another thing that was important to us, tracking individuals, not just bad guys, but we've had two or three where we've had kids walk off. So the dog has quite a few capabilities. One of the other reasons that we really looked at and, and felt that we needed a canine, on this end of the beach, a lot of the times our officers, if they were in a traffic stop where they had probable cause or some kind of expectations that there may be drugs in the car, the majority of the time it was very difficult to try and get a canine up to this end of town within a reasonable amount of time. So a lot of times we were just unable to, to follow through with that. While we've got some great canines on the beach, now we've got a great canine on the north end of the beach too. He does well at the house, he does well with kids. I've taken him to elementary school and I'll have kids just lined up at the parent drop-off like I'm handing out candy. Every kid just wants to come up, pet him, and love on him, and he's, he's a softy. He's like any other dog. He loves to roll around the yard, play, play with his tug, loves his belly rubs, his ear rubs, and he's living his best life. We, we stay healthy, we go on our runs, to make sure that we're both in shape and best we can do for our community. Low-speed vehicles, or LSVs, have become quite popular on the Outer Banks. They can make cruising through town during your vacation seem easy and carefree. However, there are a few tips that our police officers and firefighter EMTs would like for you to remember. Accidents do happen on vacation, and we'd love to do all we can to help you prevent injury. LSVs are street legal and really function the same as any other motor vehicle. While they're restricted to roads where the speed limit is 35 miles per hour or less, they are subject to the same laws as driving your car through town. Please remember that a properly licensed driver must be behind the wheel. Your LSV rental company may require an age minimum on the driver along with insurance information. All passengers must be wearing a seat belt. This means that any child subject to a safety seat needs one. Our police are on the lookout for children under 8 years old or 80 pounds that are not in an appropriate child safety seat. LSVs are not exempt from fender benders or more serious accidents when traveling 25 to 35 miles per hour. You wouldn't take the chance in your car or SUV, so please don't in your vacation LSV rental. And remember, an LSV counts as a car, no driving on trails, sidewalks, or other areas not meant for motor vehicles. Parking in an appropriate parking spot is encouraged, and two LSVs may share one spot if they like. Our public safety personnel would prefer to meet you at the station or a town event than at an avoidable accident. We want you to vacation safely on and off the road. If you have any questions about the legality of the vehicle you're driving, Consult with your rental company or the Town of Duck Police. Find out more about LSBs on our website, townofduck.com. celebrating the 47th annual Dare Day celebration. This is a celebration that kicks off the summer season. It's attended by a lot of locals, visitors, and just our community here in Dare County. We are so excited to see all the guys and girls, all the kids, and we have some really great vendors awesome yummy food really it's just all about our community and just seeing everybody kind of back out it's just kind of nice to see family and friends and visitors and it's just been a lot of fun 
Fair Day, we've been awarding the annual Citizen of the Year Award for Manio. This year, the recipients are Sarah and Rodney Benson. They're always in downtown Manio making things better for the community. Congratulations, congratulations. It's easy to love Manio because the sunrises are beautiful and your neighbors are your friends and they do anything for you. That makes being here and serving in any way you can a joy. It's really been a joy in our life. This event doesn't happen without our special events committee, our Dare Day subcommittee. Our staff do an incredible job. They lose a lot of sleep on Dare Day weekend. They're working really hard. So along with our staff and our volunteers, these things wouldn't happen.